Thank you for joining us. Congratulations on your purchase of the More Beer Premium Homebrew Starter Kit. Today, I'm gonna be taking you through all the steps of brewing and teach you how to make great beer at home. My name is Vito DeLucci. I've been working for More Beer for over seven years now. I've been home brewing for over 15 years and I was also a commercial brewer for several years as well. So let's talk quickly before we get into the brew day, the different phases of brewing beer. There's the brew day, which is about four hours uh, start to finish, so make sure you allocate enough time for that. There's fermentation, which is you know, two, two weeks about, and it kind of hands off at that point. And then there's bottling. Uh, bottling takes about an hour or so, uh, and that's after fermentation is complete. So those are the three phases of making beer. So in total, it's gonna take about a month, three to four weeks from start to finish to make a batch of beer. So you know, kick back, relax, patience is a virtue. So on brew day, we're gonna be making what they call wort. Um, brewers make wort, yeast make beer. What wort is, is essentially it's a malt sugar water. So uh, the yeast actually convert that sugar water into alcohol, CO2, uh, and finished beer. All right, so let's quickly go over an overview of the entire brew day. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is collecting water, heating it, adding steeping grains, getting to a boil, adding our malt extract, adding our hops, chilling our wort, pitching yeast, etc. So again, it takes about four hours. We're gonna go through every step. All right, so we've talked about the, the, the brew day process. Let's talk about getting ready, the day of the brew, or even maybe the day before. I think take, take part your kit, look at everything, read the, the, the sheet that we give you for the brewing instructions, read the recipe sheet, go over the kind of all the steps and kind of acclimate, get yourself ready to, to dig into that. Make sure you have all your pieces. Today we're gonna to be brewing a, a pale ale, but your kit might've came with something else, might've been an IPA or something like that. So same exact steps, um, but um, you know different recipe. So the one thing the kit doesn't include is bottles. You can collect those from local breweries. We don't want the twist type. If you could remove it with a bottle cap and remover, then that's the type we want. You don't need those on brew day. Those are after fermentation when we go into bottling. So you've got you know two to three weeks before you're gonna need those bottles. All right, before we get started, I wanna hammer home probably the most important thing in brewing. It's cleaning and sanitizing. Uh, there are two different things. Cleaning is the physical act of cleaning it, making sure there's no visible dirt, gunk, debris, that kind of thing. Then there's sanitation, so that's actually killing any microbacteria that you can't see. So it is definitely always a two-step process. So you wanna make sure something's clean, it has to be clean before you sanitize it, and then you wanna sanitize it. And just make sure we have sanitizing solution handy throughout the entire brewing process. All right, so here we are, we're ready to brew. Today is brew day. We're gonna make some beer. So let's start with collecting water. Water is, uh, you know, makes up a majority of your beer. So we obviously want to use good water. What does that mean? Uh, if you like the taste of your tap water, it's probably pretty good water. If you don't like the taste of your tap water, maybe consider going to the, uh, the grocery store and picking up some bottled water. Uh, what we need is about six gallons of water total. So uh, collect that. If you have a, a filtration system on your refrigerator, that's great. That'll actually remove the chlorine. Uh, but again, we're just looking for good tasting water. Then once we've, we've figured out where we're gonna get our water, we're gonna add that to the kettle, we're gonna turn it on high and start heating that water up. Pretty much immediately after that, we wanna add our steeping grains. So we're gonna add those grains into one of our mesh bags, uh, tie them off to the side. Essentially what we're trying to do is, is get that water mixing in with those grains and creating like a tea. All right, so those steeping grains are sitting in the water. We're slowly rising that temperature depending on the, the power of your, your oven or what your or, or stove top or what you're using. Uh, it should take about 30 minutes. If you get there before, that's okay too. But we do wanna remove those grains before we get to 170 degrees or right about 170 degrees. The reason we don't wanna go higher than that is we would be cooking and extracting tannins from those grains. So it could just make for a more bitter kind of beer. So make sure we remove those once we reach 170. That's where your thermometer comes in handy. We're taking measurements along the way. Uh, ideally take about 30 minutes though. What we're getting out of the steeping grain process is flavor and in some cases sugar as well. A majority of our sugar is going to be coming from the, the liquid malt extract that we'll er, add later, but flavor, color as well. We're getting some color depending on the beer we're going to be doing a pale ale. So there's going to be some crystal malt in there. So we're going to get some flavor, some color, and some sugars. 
All right, once we've hit the 30 minute mark or the 170 temperature mark, we're gonna remove that bag. The first instinct is to try, you know, squeeze it to try and get all that sugar out. Don't do that, we don't wanna burn ourselves. Uh, this is a hot liquid, but you can hold it over the kettle and let, uh, let it drain out. So once we remove those, set aside the grains to, to dispose of, now we're gonna bring it up to a boil. So, so make sure that heat's on high. This could take, again, depending on the power of your uh, stovetop, this could take a little while, but we're waiting to get to a roll. Also, depending on you know, where you're at altitude-wise, uh, rolling boil at sea level is about 212 temperature. So what is a rolling boil? That's, uh, you know, if you've ever boiled uh, you know, pasta or anything like that, you're looking for that, the, the top to be, you know, violently moving around, fissures coming out. So that's what we call a rolling boil. All right, so step four, now we're gonna be adding the malt extract. So this is majority of the sugar uh, that we're gonna be later fermenting. So first step we wanna do is turn that fire off. We don't want any uh, flame on the bottom because it could cause scorching. Uh, this, this liquid we're gonna be adding is heavier than water, so it's gonna have a tendency to wanna go to the bottom. If your fire's on, it's gonna be heating that right up. Um, as you're adding that, if, if you've got a free hand or you have someone with you, stirring it will help, you know, because it's gonna wanna go to the bottom. So kind of just gently stirring it. We're gonna add that entire packet. I like to uh, kind of wrap it up like toothpaste and squeeze all of it out of there and make sure you get all that. That's gonna help you hit your sugar levels. Then we could turn the, the flame back on. Um, since we've added something that's not, you know, boiling, we're gonna have to get back up to a rolling boil again. So you, you'll see another one, the corn sugar packet, the, the bottling priming sugar. You don't need to add that. That's actually for bottling. Uh, so we're not gonna add that to the boil. All right, so we've added our, our malt extract, we're boiling, we hit a rolling boil. The first thing we're gonna do is hit the hot break. So that's all those proteins that were from the, the malt extract or gonna start foaming towards the top. It might actually start rising on you. What you could do to help with that is, is lower the flame a little and give it a stir. Uh, but after that hot break, you're gonna see it rise and then it's gonna go back down uh, into solution. Um, do not, let's, let's go over this, do not put the lid on your, your kettle at any point. We want boil off. We want it to reduce the sugars and there's also compounds, volatile compounds in there that we want out of the beer. So never keep your lid on during any parts of the boil. All right, so we've, we've hit our boil, we've hit our hot break, we're ready to add our bittering hops. So most beer recipes call for a 60 minute hop addition. So this is when we wanna actually start our timer once we add that first uh, 60 minute hop addition. Let's talk about what hop additions are. So hops have what they call bittering compounds and uh, alpha acids, which turn into bitterness. Um, so it gives you the bitterness of the beer, depending on the amount of hops you add and um, the alpha acids of those hops, you get more bittering. But we wanna add those hops and then start our hop timer right at that point. Also worth noting, you know, this recipe kit, or depending on your recipe kit, it might have different hop additions later in the boil, you know, with 20 minutes left in the boil, five minutes left in the boil. Um, depending on when you add the hops, again, you're gonna have change the bitterness, but later in the boil, you add to the aroma. Um, so you're not boiling off those, those hop oil compounds for a long time. Uh, so those are what we call aroma hops. So now that we have some time, we've, we've dropped our 60 minute edition. We um, have you know, basically an hour uh, before our next step or, or 55 minutes thereabouts. It's time to make some sanitizer. Um, because we're boiling, there's, you know, it's gonna kill off any bacteria. So we don't need to worry as much uh, on the, what they call the hot side. But once we cool this wort below 180 degrees, that's when bacteria could take hold. So we wanna sanitize anything that touches the beer after we've cooled it. Uh, so we got some time, let's make some sanitizer. We're gonna collect five gallons of water and add one ounce of star sand sanitizer solution. Again, this is a no rinse uh, solution, so you don't wanna rinse it with water. Uh, don't fear the foam, as they say. Uh, leave that in there. Uh, make sure you get all the liquid out because it is an, an acid, it's a lower pH and it could change the flavor of your beer. The foam won't, but you don't want a gallon of liquid left in there when you mix your beer in. The one main thing we definitely wanna make sure sanitizes our fermenter. So let's you know, put either the entire solution or, or a gallon of that solution into your fermenter. Uh, put the cap on, uh, make sure your spigot's in there as well swirl it all around. It needs at least one minute of contact time. So make sure we're getting a minute contact time of 
every part that will touch beer. Uh, that means the spigot itself running a little through there, uh, but we wanna make sure at least one minute contact time on anything that'll touch beer as well. So your tubing, things like that, that we're gonna use once we cool the wort. So once we've we've uh, you know sanitized our fermenter, let's we want to keep that sanitizer around. So drain it back into your bucket. Make sure you're using that because anything again with, that we touches wort when we're cool, it's just handy to have that sanitizer solution around. If you got a spray bottle, you could fill that up and you could use that to spray around anything that's going to touch it as well. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do at the 20 minute mark, when we have 20 minutes left in our boil, is gonna set up the wort chiller. So this kit came with a wort chiller. It's an amazing item. Uh, it not only saves you time, it helps you make better beer by quickly chilling the wort. Anyways, what we're gonna wanna do is insert that in the boil kettle. Again, we're dealing with hot boiling liquid, so be careful. Also the tubing, uh, make sure that that's directed away from you, especially on your, your next brews because there'll be a little water, a little moisture in that line. And when you put it into boiling water, it's going to turn into steam and steam's going to come out there. So always make sure those tubes are in a safe direction. But essentially we're adding the wort chiller to the boil kettle in order to sanitize it. So that's why we want to give it at least 15, 20 minutes in the boiling wort to help sanitize it. So yeah, with those tubes that we wanna have over towards the sink, make, let's go ahead and thread those onto your sink so your, your water in and then also your water out is going, because you know, the water that's coming out of there is gonna be you know, 200 degrees hot, so make sure that's going down the sink and in it to a safe direction. All right, let's talk about other boil additions. I, I mentioned on them earlier, uh, your kit might have some hops that go in at this point that are aroma hops. Um, every kit comes with a uh, wort clarifier, which is a, in this case, I think it's a kick tablet. It's also called Irish Moss. Different kits come with different things, but what it's doing is it's helping bind those proteins and helping you make clear beer. So settling out a lot of those proteins and hop things like that as well. So this is when we'll add those last minute additions. You could add yeast nutrient at this point as well. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and add those last minute hop additions. Let's talk about flame out additions too. Depending on your kit, if you got the Pliny kit, there's definitely a ton of hops that go in at this point. So these are the flame out additions. So they're not gonna have any boiling time. These are all hop aroma. Um, so those are when you turn the flame off add them in and then this is what we do we call a whirlpool just kind of give it a spin allows them to really mix in there and get that hop aroma bursting all right so now it's time to chill the wort again our kit came with a wort chiller so it's gonna be super easy for us we're just gonna essentially turn the sink on uh, depending on your groundwater temperature so if it's in the summer months it might be a little warmer winter months is a little cooler that's how long it's gonna take to chill your wort so we want that wort to be under 80 degrees before we transfer it into the fermenter. Again, depending on your ground water temperature, it could take anywhere from 20 minutes to you know, 45 minutes. Uh, but we wanna make sure we chill that, add the cold water. Uh, slower we go, the better on that, you know, so you don't have to go full, full bore uh, because the more time that that water spends in the, that copper tube, the more heat it's gonna pull out. They call a wort chiller is essentially a heat exchanger. So it's taking the, the, the heat, the cold water, and then pumping it down the sink. So the slower, the better. Also, we don't wanna waste water. Also, while we're chilling the wort, I mentioned it earlier, once we get below 180 degrees, that liquid is now susceptible to microbacteria and things like that. So once we're, it's probably good practice just to cover it right when you, when you knock out, uh, but especially under 180 degrees, we wanna cover that kettle. If you got some tin foil, wrap it around there. If you've got that bottle of spray, star sand, spray it around there. We just wanna make sure we sanitize it. We don't, we want our yeast to have the best environment. We do not, we're not trying to make a sour beer. It's not a Belgian beer. Also worth mentioning at this point, now we're on the cold side, you know, we've passed the hot side. So again, anything that comes in contact with your wort, make sure it's had at least a minute contact time with sanitizing solution. Uh, because it, even though you can't see it, there's ambient microflora that will infect your beer. All right, so now we're gonna be transferring our, our beer, our wort actually at this point into the fermenter. How we're gonna do that, your, your uh, kettle has a spigot on there, so we're gonna put the, uh, the tubing, again, we want this to have been sanitized tubing, so make sure you've sanitized it. We're gonna put it on the kettle, uh, drape that into the fermenter, and then we're gonna open the valve. Uh, again, we want it to be under 80 degrees, so make sure we've dropped the temperature. If 90, it's fine, because we're actually gonna probably lose some, uh, some temperature uh, by, by transferring it over. So we wanna make sure the wort's cooled, transfer it into the fermenter by hooking up the tubing, open up the valve, and let it on in. All right, so at this point, we're gonna measure the sugars. Uh, so we've, we've transferred the wort out of the kettle into the fermenter. Um, 
be because it's at a lower temperature, our hydrometers actually are calibrated about 70 degrees, 65, 70 degrees. So we wanna make sure we're taking that measurement at the proper temperature. Since we've chilled the wort, we're okay to do that. Um, what we're gonna be using is a hydrometer, which is, is basically measuring the, the viscosity of the solution. So it measures the amount of sugars by um, how, how buoyant it is in the, the, the hydrometer jar. So you're gonna pull a solution in your hydrometer jar. You don't need to fill it all the way to the top because when we put in that um, hydrometer, it's actually gonna displace some liquid. So leave you know, a good two inches uh, and then that'll, that'll be able to float in there. It just needs to be able to float. Another little trick I like to do is give it a little spin. Um, there could be air bubbles that are caught underneath it that could throw off your measurement. So give it a little spin. Once it settles out, that's when you're gonna take your, um, your reading. You're gonna look right at the crest of where the liquid is, and then that's gonna be your measurement. And that's gonna be your original gravity. Uh, this measurement is critical because that's gonna give us our alcohol content. So we take original gravity, final gravity, where it finished after fermentation, and that's how we calculate our alcohol content or ABV. All right, so now we've made wort. Now it's time to make beer. So we're gonna pitch the yeast. Yeast are what make beer. They turn that sugar into alcohol. They also produce gas during that time. So first thing, let's talk about pitching that yeast. Sanitize some scissors, sanitize the yeast packet, uh, dunk them in, let them make sure they have at least a minute time, uh, cut the top, uh, try and be you know quick and keep everything as sanitary as possible at this point, remove the top uh, with the airlock on it, pop the yeast in there, close it up, Give it a good shake. That's going to allow to mix that, that yeast into solution. It's also going to help oxygenate the wort, which just helps yeast grow. Um, the other thing we want to do is make sure we have our airlock filled. There's a little line on there. You want to fill that airlock with sanitizer, or you could even use vodka, things like that. Uh, the airlock allows gas to escape, but no nasty bacteria to make its way in. All right, so let's now talk about where the fermenter goes. We've pitched our yeast. The yeast are going to start, uh, you know, chewing on those sugars, um, where we want to keep the fermenter. So ideally, um, it, it really depends on the type of beer. We're, we're making an ale here. So we want to keep it in 65 to 68 degree space. Uh, so if you have an inner closet, we also want to keep it away from light. We don't want light and we want to keep the temperature down. Um, some ways you can keep the temperature down, if you've got like a bin, uh, you could put ice water in there and wrap a, a towel around there so it'll wick up. Um, don't have to do that, it could just be as simple as a closet. It really just depends on how uh, the temperature inside your house. But again, we want to keep it 60 to 70 degrees, right in that range um, to get the best flavors. Cool, brew day is completed. We've made wort, yeast are gonna make the beer. Now we're gonna move on to fermentation. Let's talk a little bit about fermentation. So fermentation starts. So that's the, you know, within the first 24 to 48 hours. Could be a little longer, could be a little shorter. Uh, yeast is a living organism. And again, like we talked about temperature and things like that, all these things are variables. So, you know, if it doesn't start within 24 hours, don't worry, 48. Uh, but you're gonna start to see signs of fermentation. And what that means is they call it the Krausen, uh, which is a, basically looks like beer foam across the top of it. And then on your carboy, you'll be able to actually see yeast colonies kind of moving up and down in the solution and what they're doing they're they're eating sugar metabolizing it and they're generating heat too we talked about keeping it cool so they're that's going to be the warmest part of your fermentation and that's when it's actually most important to try and keep it under that 70 degrees yeast produce alcohol co2 like we talked about they also produce uh esters and things like that and esters are beautiful they're a big part of beer but we don't want them to be totally prevalent so we're trying to keep that temperature down at that point all right, so let's talk about the second step of fermentation, which is the day four through 12. It's, it's the Krausen starts to lower back down, yeast activity starts to lower out. You're still gonna get bubbles coming through your airlock, but what they're doing now is they're going, they, uh, like I mentioned earlier, they're producing all kinds of compounds. Then they're going back and cleaning up those compounds. So it's actually a very important part of fermentation. A lot of flavors created, a lot of flavors cleaned up in that second stage of fermentation. Uh, not as at temperature at this point, it's okay for it to be a little warmer. Um, you know, we'll go up and go and clean things up. So it's okay, but you're gonna start to see everything kind of slow down at that point. All right, so it's been you know day eight, day 10, day 12, right around there, fermentation ends. This is where, yeah, like I said earlier, the Krausen drops down. There's not much activity in your airlock, if all at any. Uh, but the main thing we're looking for here is taking a measurement to see that it actually stopped fermenting. 
We're gonna see where that sugar level's at. We wanna take two measurements to make sure that it's completed. So, you know, wait till, till Krausen's died down, not much bubble activities, take a measurement. Next day, take another measurement. Um, if it continues to drop, so say you're 1015 and then you see it 1012, wait until you've gotten two measurements where it's completely stopped. Then we know fermentation is complete. All right, so we've covered our brew day, we've covered fermentation. Next thing is gonna be bottling. I've gotta wait for my beer to finish, so we'll be talking with you soon when we're ready to go ahead and bottle. All right, it's been two weeks. It's time to bottle condition our beer. We're gonna add the, the sugar back there, which creates this CO2, this carbonated head, so the fizz in your beer. We're gonna be doing that part of the process. Um, so we'll be adding sugar back in. During fermentation, all that CO2 escapes through the airlock. We've seen those bubbles, but now we wanna capture it in. So we'll be adding that priming sugar and keeping that CO2 in the bottle to give it that fizz that we love. All right, so now let's gather up everything we're gonna need for, uh, for bottling. So get all your vinyl tubing, your buckets, everything. And then we're gonna move our fermenter. We wanna put it up somewhere kind of high, the edge of a table, because we're gonna use gravity to move it into the bottling bucket. We wanna allow everything to settle out. So as you move it, that Krausen, all the things on the side, you're gonna see those kind of knock their way into solution. And we just wanna give them time to settle to the bottom. So we wanna let it sit for at least 20 minutes. All right, so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna boil our, our priming sugar. So we're gonna use two cups of water. Go ahead and add the two cups of water, bring it to a boil. Then we're gonna add the priming sugar. It's that little packet uh, that, that came with your kit. Mix that in um, and allow it to cool down. We also wanna cover that and just make sure that nothing's getting in there. Just keep it sanitary, so cover it with some tin foil um, and, and set it to the side. We're gonna use that in a couple minutes. All right, the next step we're gonna do is mix some sanitizer. So it's one ounce of sanitizer solution to five gallons of water. So let's go ahead and do that in our bucket. Let's make sure the valve is closed before we add water in there because we don't want it to spill out on our kitchen floor or wherever we're doing this. So one ounce of, of uh, sanitizer, five gallons of water in our bottling bucket. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is grab a sample so we can figure out our final gravity of the beer. So we'll grab a sample pull it into our hydrometer jar. Again, don't fill it to the top, leave an inch or two. We want to, uh, we're gonna be adding that hydrometer in there so we want it to float. So we're gonna do that before we move it into the bottling bucket. Take our sample, set it off to the side. All right, next step now, we're gonna go ahead and get our bottling bucket ready and put our priming sugar in there. So first thing, you know, we gotta get that sanitizer solution out of there, so pour that out. Get all the liquid out, don't worry if there's foam in there, that's fine. Um, then the first thing we'll do is add that priming sugar, the, the water and sugar solution we boiled earlier, into the bucket. We wanna put it in there first because when we add the wort, it's gonna mix and just get a good mixture so we get a primed solution. All right, so the next step we're gonna do is sanitize the remaining, the other equipment that we're gonna be using in the bottling process. So that's your vinyl tubing, your bottle filler, and all your bottling caps. After that, we'll go ahead and make sure that the, the bottling bucket is set up to where gravity could feed from the fermenter into the bottling bucket. Uh, we're gonna pull out our sanitized tubing, attach it to the bottom of the fermenter uh, spigot there, and then run it into the bucket with the priming solution in there. Um, I like to put like tin foil over the top of the bucket, just close that up so it's not a big open um, area, then run your tube into there. And we're gonna go ahead and open the spigot at this point. Again, make sure your spigot is closed on your bottling bucket and start bringing your finished beer into that bottling bucket. And again, it's gonna mix with that priming sugar uh, to, to get it ready for the next stage. Next thing we're gonna do is sanitize our bottles. So again, we want them to at least have one to two minutes of uh, uh, time in that sanitizer solution. So just get them in there, uh, get you know as many as you can, five, 10. Uh, then pull them out, let them hang upside down. Ideally, a bottling, uh, a bottle tree comes in handy at this point. If you don't have one, just kind of drain as much as you can and then place them back up this way. I like to put a little piece of tin foil over the top of them uh, just because, again, sanitation is key. Just keep them all off to the side and we're gonna use those in a couple minutes here. So we've moved all of our finished beer into the bottling bucket. We've mixed it in with the priming sugar. Next step, we're gonna wanna move it up to a higher point because we're gonna use gravity to move, uh, move into the bottle. So go ahead and put it up on the same, uh, same ledge or counter that you had the fermenter on, and then we're gonna attach our bottling wand. So that bottling wand fits right on the bottom of that spigot. Um, and so pull it out of the sanitizer solution, put it on there, and then we're ready to move on to the next step.
All right, so now we've got our filling wand on our bottling bucket. We're ready to fill our bottles. So what we're gonna do is, you know, at this point we wanna kind of set it up as an assembly line, make sure we've got our bottles ready to go, ready to move over to the next step. It's helpful to have a friend to do the, the capping portion, but we'll grab our first bottle. We'll go ahead and put it up into the, with the wand in there, that there's a little spring at the bottom. So once that's engaged, liquid's gonna flow. We're gonna wanna fill that all the way up to the top because as we pull out the bottling wand, it's displacing uh, liquid in there and it'll, it'll leave you a nice inch. So go ahead and bring them right up to the top there and then pull it on and we're ready to go on to our next stage of capping. All right, we've got a, a filled bottle. We want to cap it now. So we're going to grab our caps out of the sanitizer solution, put them on the top there, um, and then we're gonna, just going to take that, that bottling uh, capper and push down on there on either side. You're going to hit a, a point of tension, and then you go a little past that, and you'll, you'll feel it kind of pop in there. Um, then what I like to do is you know rinse it off or, or uh, scrub it off, and you've got a bottle. Once we've moved through and filled our five gallons of, of bottles, you'll get about 50 to 54, uh, depending on how much uh, liquid you had in your fermenter. We can put them back in the case. We want to protect them from sunlight. We don't want you know direct light. Um, and we also want to put them, just like when you're fermenting the beer, we want this to be a you know, steady temperature place because we're actually having a second fermentation and that's what's creating the carbonation and making that beer fizzy. So put them back in the case, find a nice cool place that's out of direct sunlight and we're going to let them sit for another week to two weeks. All right, so our bottles are safely away, getting ready to uh, create their carbonation. So what we'll do is we're gonna take our last measurement here. So we're gonna take that last gravity reading. This is called our final gravity reading. So initially in the brewing process, we took our original gravity. Now we're gonna take our final gravity um, to calculate our alcohol by volume or ABV. Uh, so our original gravity minus our final gravity multiplied by 131 gives us our alcohol by volume. All right, so let's talk about conditioning. I said you know, take about a week or two. Uh, really depends on you know, its time and temperature and, and, and the yeast themselves. But uh, after two weeks, what I like to do is take one of those bottles, pop it in the refrigerator, let it sit overnight for 24 hours, then pull it out and crack it open. If you've got a great you know, carbonation to it, if it's bubbly, fizzy, great head on there, those are all ready to go ahead and move into the refrigerator and, 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 and lock in that, that uh, carbonation profile. All right, so we've got finished beer. We've taken it from grain to glass. Time to crack these open, share them with friends, family, and enjoy beer. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. Uh, love this hobby. Be sure to subscribe to More Beer Channel for more videos like this where we talk about beer, brewing, enjoying beer. Cheers.